Jeremiah chapter 44, approximately page 514 in the scriptures. The word that came to Yirmiyahu, Jeremiah, concerning all the Yehudim, all the tribe of Judah, who were dwelling in the land of Mitzrayim, who were dwelling in Egypt, who were dwelling at Migdal, and at Taphanes, and at Nophan, in the land of Patros, saying. Mm. So, we're going to do 44, probably 45 and 46 as well, because this is all more or less one contiguous thought. We're dealing with false worship here by the children of Israel and the smoke session that they get from the Father because of their false worship, because they've been told by the man of Elohim, the prophet Jeremiah, hey, don't do this stuff. Also, if you remember back to last week, previously, the children of Israel, those who were left over in the land of Judah after the Babylonians exiled the vast majority of people to Babylon, those that were left over, the remnant asked Jeremiah, what should we do? And, and there's parallels here. The remnant asks the man of Elohim, what should we do? And he tells them, he beseeches the father on their behalf, a prayer of intercession, and says, hey, what, what do we do with these people? I believe it's 10 days go by. And the father says, don't go to Egypt. Stay here in the land and I will bless you. Do not bug out. Jeremiah brings that word to the leaders of the remnant, and they say, mm, paraphrasing, New Living Bear translation, mm, no, we're going to go to Egypt. To which Jeremiah replies, you asked me to ask the father what to do, and I did that, and he said to stay here. They're like, mm, yeah, but we're going to go to Egypt. So they did the exact opposite of what the father told them to do. They claim, this remnant, believe to claim, or claim to believe in the Father, and to be uh, subjected, subservient to the Father's will. And yet they did what they wanted to do anyway. And now, again, further separating of the wheat and the chaff, further separating of the goats and the sheep, the Father's like, all right, you want to go down to Mitzrayim? You want to go hang out in Egypt? Watch this. Chapter 44, verse 2. Thus said Yahuwah of hosts, the Elohim of Israel, You yourselves have seen all the evil that I brought on Jerusalem and on all the cities of Judah. And see, this day they are a ruin, and no one dwells in them, because of their evil which they have done to provoke me, by going to burn incense, by serving other mighty ones, false worship. There is no God but God. The first command in the Ten Commandments, Exodus 20. Whom they did not know, they nor your fathers. And I sent to you all my servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them, saying, Please do not do this abominable matter, abominable matter that I hate. Abominable matter that I hate. Do not falsely worship. Please, I'm beseeching you, please don't do this. Abominations provoke the Father against us. Sin is thin is thin, brother. Yeah, sin is transgression of the law. Abominations provoke the Father against us. Well, well, where do you get that understanding? Right here in verse 3. Because of their evil, which they have done to provoke me, by going to burn incense, by serving other mighty ones whom they did not know, they nor your fathers. Your sins create a separation between you and Elohim. Isaiah teaches us that. Abominations... Provoke the Father against you. He's now working directly against you because of the depth of your sin, because of your abominations. Because there's certain things one shall not do. Period. The end. Yet and still, they do them anyway. And so now Dad is pissed. He has been provoked. Verse 4, And I sent to you all my servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them, saying, Please do not do this abominable matter that I hate. But they, don't, they did not listen or incline their ear to turn from their evil, not to burn incense to other mighty ones. So my wrath and my displeasure were poured out, 
and burned in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, and they became a ruin and a wasteland as it is this day. And now, thus said Yahuwah, the Elohim of hosts, Yahuwah Sabaoth, the Elohim of Israel, why are you doing this great evil against your lives? To cut off from you man and woman, child and infant, from the midst of Judah, leaving none to remain, by provoking me with the works of your hands, by burning incense to other mighty ones in the land of Mitzrayim, where you have gone to dwell, to cut yourselves off and to be a curse and a reproach amongst all the nations of the earth. Have you forgotten the evils your fathers, and the evils of the kings of Judah, and the evils of their wives, and your own evils, and the evils of your wives, which they have done in the land of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? To this day they have not been humbled." Nor have they feared, nor have they walked in my Torah and in my laws that I set before you and your fathers. Therefore, thus said Yahuwah of hosts, the Elohim of Israel, See, I am setting my face against you for evil, and for cutting off all of Judah. And I shall take the remnant of Judah, who have set their faces to go into the land of Mitzrayim to sojourn there. And they shall all be consumed in the land of Mitzrayim, fall by the sword, consumed by scarcity of food. From the least to the greatest they shall die, by the sword and by scarcity of food. And they shall be an oath and an astonishment and a curse and a reproach. And I shall punish those dwelling in the land of Mitzrayim as I have punished Jerusalem, by the sword, by scarcity of food, and by pestilence. And none of the remnant of Judah who have gone into the land of Mitzrayim to sojourn there shall escape or survive lest they return to the land of Judah, to which they are longing to return to dwell there. For they shall not return, except those who escape. Further sifting and separating. The father doesn't say all the remnant of Judah. He says all the remnant of Judah who chooses to stay in Egypt. I'm going to wipe you out. I told you what to do. I told you to stay in Jerusalem. In fact, I told you you would be richly blessed if you stayed in Jerusalem to serve me but you chose not to. You want the will of your own heart rather than what the Father told you to do. So you escaped Jerusalem in your own mind so that you would not be subjected to war and scarcity of food and plague and disease. You don't think I can do that here in Mitzrayim, in Egypt as well? Watch this. Then all the men who knew that their wives had burned incense to other mighty ones, and all the women who stood by, a great assembly, and all the people who dwelt in the land of Mitzrayim and Patros answered Jeremiah, saying, We are not going to listen to you in the matter about what you spoke to us in the name of Yahuwah. Nope. Cool story, bro. Nope. We're not doing that. But we shall do whatever has gone out of our own mouths, to burn incense to the princess of the heavens and to pour out drink offerings to her as we have done, we and our fathers, our kings and our heads in the city of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. And we had plenty of food and were well off and saw no evil. But since we ceased burning incense to the princess of the heavens and pouring out drink offerings to her, we have lacked all and have been consumed by the sword and scarcity of food. And when we burned incense to the princess of the heavens and poured out drink offerings to her, did we make cakes for her to idolize her, to idolize her, and pour out drink offerings to her without our husbands? So these are these women speaking, basically saying, no, we're going to continue worshiping this princess of the heavens, this false god, false worship, pagan idolatry. They literally say we made idols of her. We idolized her. Yeah, what's the first command in the Ten Commandments? There is no God but God. What is the most sacred prayer in all the word? Deuteronomy 6 verse 4. Shema Yisrael, Yahuwah Elohanu, Yahuwah Echad. Hear, O Israel, Yahuwah is our God. Yahuwah is one. Uh, these folks are not tracking with that. And now these women to whom Jeremiah was speaking, who make up a great part of this assembly who apparently were the ones doing this bad stuff, are basically saying, when we did this bad stuff, it went well for us. So we're going to keep doing that bad stuff. We're not listening to you. And oh, by the way, you think we were doing this without our husbands knowing? Mm. 
Wives be subjected to your husbands as your husband is subjected to Yah. Hmm. Sounds like a real chain of command issue here. A lack of headship. Verse 20. Then Jeremiah spoke to all the people, to the men and to the women, and to answer all the people who had given him that answer, saying, As for the incense that you burned in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, you and your fathers, your kings and your heads, and the people of the land, did not Yahuwah remember them? And it came into his heart. Look what they got for doing what they did. And Yahuwah could no longer bear it because of the evil of your deeds and because of the abominations which you did. Therefore your land is a ruin, an object of astonishment, a curse, and without an inhabitant as it is to this day. Yeah, alright. You worship the way you want to see fit, not the way God told you to. See how well that's going to go for you. Did not Yahuwah remember it? And you wonder, now, why is my life falling apart? How come I can't feel the presence of God in my life? You know, I pray. I said the words at church, but I, you know, I don't feel saved. By the way, feelings are a fleeting thing. Feelings are biomechanical feedback mechanisms. Yod, do stuff. You're supposed to walk with Messiah. 1 Peter 2.21, for this you were called, the Messiah having suffered for your sins, that you might walk in his steps, not feel in his steps. Plus, find me somewhere in the Bible where it says you can say a cute little prayer on Sunday morning and be saved without having any responsibility or ramification. Mm -mm. That's non-biblical. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, that's the man of lawlessness. The man of lawlessness is the Antichrist. You're a free man now. You've been forgiven. You can do whatever you want to do. Really? Really, you can do whatever you want to do now? That doesn't seem to be going well for these people in Jeremiah. It certainly didn't go well for Cain. Uh, it didn't go well for Tubal Cain. It didn't go well for the vast majority. 80% of the kings mentioned in 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles. It's not going well for the king Siddiq Yahu here in Jeremiah. That sounds like lawlessness. That sounds like false doctrine. Which is what these people, this remnant of Judah, are being accused of and have been found guilty of by Yahuwah their Elohim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God's God. We're going to worship however we want to worship. Got it. No. That's not what he said. And that's not what the man of Elohim, the prophet Jeremiah, said either. It's not what Yeshua said. Yah made flesh. Find me a single passage in any of the four Gospels where Yeshua says, Worship the way you want to worship. It'll be fine. It's not in there. James, Yaakov, Yeshua's blood brother, what does he say? You say you have faith, I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one. Good. The demons believe God is one and they tremble at his name. So you tremble at the name of Yahuwah? Are you actually subjected to him? Or is this just mental ascent, Greek logos? I believe with my mind that he must be God. Therefore, I'm good to go. Or do you understand the renewed covenant in Hebrews chapter 8? Renewed covenant. Renewed covenant made new again covenant with Yeshua as the Messiah, Mashiach, the intercessor between us and the Father, where the Father will put his laws in your mind and write them on your heart, and then he will be your Elohim and you will be his people, and he will remember your sins and your lawlessness no more. Because when it's in your mind and on your heart, you do it. You speak it out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. Not just mental assent to the idea that I've been saved and therefore I'm free and I can do whatever I want to do. That's extra biblical bullcrap. That's false doctrine. No. You have to walk the way Messiah walked. And this is not a works-based theology because none of us are getting into the kingdom based upon our works. But the works are fruit of belief. Go see Abraham. Abraham did what Yah told him to do, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Luke 1 verse 6, blamelessly walking in the commands of Yah. Righteousness. 
blamelessly walking in the commands of Yah. Not to be saved, but because you are saved. And we've talked about that word saved before. The biblical word is redeemed, and there's a Torah for redemption. And when you're redeemed, you come into the master's house. Who's the master? Messiah. Who can do the redeeming? Only a kinsman redeemer, a brother. So why did Yah have to become flesh in the first place? To be your brother, to redeem you, to bring you back into the household of the master, back into the family, so that you could be a bondservant, as Paul, Shaul of Tarsus, talks about all through his epistles in the New Testament, so you could be a bondservant in the house of Messiah, serving the Father, grafted in, if you will, to the rootstock. What's the rootstock? Israel. Who are the branches? Well, there were natural branches, the 12 tribes, as discussed in Romans chapter 11, and then there are wild branches, the Gentiles who are grafted in. And remember, the root bears the branch, not the other way around. So you worship, false worship however you want, but sooner or later, it's going to catch up with you. And the accountability here is that the children of Israel knew not to do this, and yet they did it anyway. That's the crux of the issue. So what areas of your life do you know not to do something and you do it anyway? Or you know what to do and you just won't do it because it's not comfortable. It's not easy. It's not what I want. The father's not impressed by what I want. What brings me closer to him is obedience to his word what he wants. Verse 22. And Yahuwah could no longer bear it because of the evil of your deeds and because of the abominations which you did. Therefore your land is a ruin, an object of astonishment, a curse and without an inhabitant to this day. Because you have burned incense and because you have sinned against Yahuwah and did not obey his voice, and did not obey the voice of Yahuwah, or walk in his Torah, in his laws, or in his witnesses. Therefore this evil did befall you, as at this day. And Jeremiah said to all the people and to all the women, Hear the word of Yahuwah, all Judah who are in the land of Mitzrayim. Thus spoke Yahuwah of hosts, the Elohim of Israel, saying, You and your wives have spoken with your mouths, and have filled with your hands. You did this with your hands, saying, We shall perform our vows that we have made to burn incense to the, king, the princess of the heavens and pour out drink offerings to her. Then confirm your vows and perform your vows. You made a choice. You want to be in covenant, vow, wedding ring. You want to be in covenant with her? Go for it. Therefore, hear the word of Yahuwah. All Judah who are dwelling in the land of Mitzrayim, see I have sworn by my great name, declares Yahuwah, my name shall no longer be called upon by the mouth of any man of Judah in all the land of Mitzrayim, saying as the master Yahuwah lives. See I am watching over them for evil and not for good. And all the men of Judah who are in the land of Mitzrayim shall be consumed by the sword and by scarcity of food until they come to an end. And those who escape the sword, few in number, shall return from the land of Mitzrayim to the land of Judah. And all the remnant of Judah who came into the land of Mitzrayim to sojourn there shall know whose word is established, mine or theirs. And this is the sign to you, declares Yahuwah, that I am punishing you in this place so that you know that my words are certainly established against you for evil. Thus said Yahuwah, See, I am giving Pharaoh Hophra, king of Mitzrayim, into the hand of his enemies, and into the hand of those who seek his life. As I gave Sidiq Yahu, the king of Judah, into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, his enemy who sought his life. You thought you'd be safe in Mitzrayim, in Egypt, against the council of Yahuwah. Here's a sign for you. I will destroy the king of Egypt too. And then we'll see whose word has come to pass. Your word, measly human who's been disobedient, or my word, Yahuwah. Your Elohim. Forty five. The word that Jeremiah prophet, the prophet, spoke to Baruch, son of Neriah, when he had written these words in a book from the mouth of Jeremiah in the fourth year of Yehoiakim, son of Yoshiahu, king of Judah, saying, 
Thus said Yahuwah, the Elohim of Israel, concerning you, Baruch. You have said, Woe to me now, for Yahuwah has added grief to my pain. I have been wearied with my sighing and have found no rest. Say this to him. Thus said Yahuwah, See what I have built and am breaking down, and what I have planted and am plucking up, that is, the entire land. And do you see great matters for yourself? Do not seek them, for look, I am bringing evil on all flesh, declares Yahuwah. But I shall give your life to you as a prize in all places wherever you go. Yeah, Baruch, things look bad. But I will sustain you. I shall give your life to you as a prize in all places wherever you go. And 46. The word of Yahuwah which came to Jeremiah the prophet concerning the nations. For Mitzrayim, concerning the army of Pharaoh Necho, king of Mitzrayim, which was by the river Euph which was by the river Euphrates in Carchemish and which Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babel, had stricken in the fourth year of Yehoiakim, son of Yoshiahu, king of Judah. Oh look, Nebuchadnezzar destroying Mitzrayim. Where have I heard that before? Prepare the large and the small shield, and draw near to battle. Harness the horses, and mount up, you horsemen. Stand with helmets, polish the spears, put on the armor. Why do I see them afraid? Turned back. And their fighters are beaten down, and they have fled in haste, and did not look back, for fear was all around, declares Yahuwah. Do not let the swift flee away, nor the mighty man escape. They shall stumble and fall towards the north by the river Euphrates. Who is this rising like a flood, whose waters surge about like the rivers? Mitzrayim rises like a flood, and its waters surge about like the rivers. And he says, Let me rise and cover the earth, let me destroy the city and its inhabitants. Go up, O horses, and rage, O chariots, and let the, let the mighty men go forth. Cush and Put, who handle the shield, and Lud, who handle and bend the bow. For this is the day of the master Yahuwah of hosts, the day of vengeance, to revenge himself on his adversaries. And the sword shall devour and be satisfied and made drunk with their blood. For the master Yahuwah of hosts has a slaughtering in the land of the north by the river Euphrates. Go up to Gilead and take balm, O maiden, the daughter of Mitzrayim. In vain you have used many remedies. There is no healing for you. Nations have heard of your shame, and your, <coughs> and your cry <coughs> has filled the land. For the mighty has stumbled against the mighty. They have both fallen together. Now this portion here is part of the bow Torah portion. The word which Yahuwah spoke to Jeremiah the prophet about the coming of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, to strike the land of Mitzrayim of Egypt. Declare in Mitzrayim, in Egypt, and let it be heard in Migdal, and let it be heard in Noph and Taphanes, saying, Stand fast and be prepared, for a sword shall devour all around you. Why were your strong ones swept away? They did not stand, because Yahuwah drove them away. He made many stumble. Indeed, they fell over each other and said, Arise, let us go back to our own people and to the land of our birth, away from the oppressing sword. There they cried, Pharaoh, king of Mitzrayim, is but a noise. He has let the appointed time pass by. As I live, declares the king, whose name is Yahuwah of hosts, for as Tabor is among the mountains and Carmel by the sea, he shall come, Nebuchadnezzar shall come. O you daughter dwelling in Mitzrayim, O you remnant of Judah dwelling in Mitzrayim, prepare yourself to go into exile, for Noph shall become a waste and a ruin and be burned without inhabitant. Mitzrayim is like a very pretty heifer, but destruction comes, it comes from the north. Her hired ones too in her midst are like fattened calves, for they too shall turn, and they shall flee away together. They shall not stand, for the day of their calamity has come upon them, the time of their punishment. Its sound moves along like a serpent, for they move... They move on like an army and come against her with axes like woodcutters. They shall cut down her forest, declares Yahuwah, for it is not searched because they are more numerous than the locusts and without number. The daughter of Mitzrayim shall be put to shame. She shall be given into the hand of the people of the north. Yahuwah of hosts, the Elohim of Israel, has said, See, I am bringing punishment on Ammon of No, and on Pharaoh, and on, on Mitzrayim, and on their mighty ones, and on their kings, and on Pharaoh, and on those trusting in him. And I shall give them into the hand of those who seek their lives, into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hand of his servants. And afterward it shall be inhabited, as in the days of old, declares Yahuwah. 
But as for you, do not fear, O my servant Jacob, Israel. And do not be discouraged, O Israel, for look, I am saving you from afar, and your descendants from the land of their captivity. And Jacob, Jacob, shall return, and shall have rest and be at ease, with no one disturbing. Go back to Jerusalem like I told you. Do not fear, O Jacob, my servant, declares Yahuwah, for I am with you. Though I make a complete end of all the nations to which I have driven you, yet I do not make a complete end of you. But I shall reprove you in right ruling, and by no means leave you unpunished. The word of Jeremiah, which came to the word of Yahuwah, which came to Jeremiah the prophet concerning the nations. Yah's gonna smoke the nations, and you Israelites, you of Jacob, of which we're grafted into Romans 11, Yah says, I'm gonna destroy all these nations. I'm gonna make a complete end of them. I don't make a complete end of you. I need you to know that, because it's gonna feel like utter destruction for you too, but I'm reproving and instructing you because I love you. But I shall reprove you in right ruling and by no means leave you unpunished. You're going to get yours too. But unlike the nations which I'm destroying, I'm not going to destroy you. It'll feel like you're part of this destruction that's taking place all around you as well. But I'm reproving and instructing you. I'm making you better and stronger. I don't leave you unpunished. You earned a whooping, you're going to get it. Everybody else is going to get destroyed. So there's some real nuance in there for us with our understanding. If our identity is as the sons of Elohim in Israel, made whole, made new by the blood of Messiah, as all the world falls apart all around us, it will feel like our world is falling apart as well. But the Father is reproving us with right ruling. He's teaching us how to be more like what he designed us to be. And punishing us as we deserve. Yeah, but what about that Chris Tomlin song? My sins are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. Yeah, yep, you're saved from death. But actions have consequences. Shall we sin all the more so that grace may abound? No, God forbid. How about Hebrews 10? That's worth a gander. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. For if we sin purposefully, what is sin? 1 John 3, verse 4, transgression of the law. If we transgress the law purposefully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a slaughter offering for sins. That covered by the blood of the lamb stuff that people like to bandy about on Sunday mornings. There no longer remains a slaughter offering for sins. Oh, by the way, Paul, the Apostle Paul, Shaul of Tarsus wrote this. So for everybody who's into Pauline doctrine, air quote. There no longer remains a slaughter offering for sins, but some fearsome anticipation of judgment and a fierce fire which is about to consume the opponents. Sounds a lot like what we just read in Jeremiah. Anyone who has disregarded the Torah of Moshe dies without compassion, this is in the New Testament, on the witness of two or three witnesses. Anyone who has disregarded the Torah of Moses dies without compassion on the witness of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you think shall he deserve who has trampled the son of Elohim underfoot, Yeshua, counted the blood of the covenant, the renewed covenant, Hebrews chapter 8, by which he was set apart as common, and insulted the spirit of grace? For we know him who has said, Vengeance is mine, I shall repay, says Yahuwah. And again, Yahuwah shall judge his people. We just read that in Jeremiah. It is fearsome, to fall into the hands of the living Elohim. It's a sifting, it's a separating in Jeremiah, even of this remnant that bugged out from Jerusalem to Mitzrayim. 
He says, and again, here's the mercy. Where's the grace? There's no grace in the Old Testament. Here's the grace. If you go back to Jerusalem where I told you to go in the first place, I won't utterly destroy you. If you do this thing that I told you not to do, that you decided to do anyway, man, we're out of strikes. I've just got to destroy you now. That's mercy. Giving you an option. Might not be the option you want, but it doesn't matter what you want. It's what God wants. Is that not the definition of obedience? Doing what he wants you to do, whether you want to do it or not, that sounds obedient to me. Oh, and by the way, his burden is easy. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. Come to me, all ye who labor. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Just don't whore after other idols. Love the Lord your God with everything you got and love your neighbor as yourself. It's basic kindergarten level stuff. No whoring, no idolatry, no murder, no blood. Go to the temple on the Sabbath and hear the words of Moshe. Hmm, where's that? That's in Acts chapter 15 in the New Testament. Written by the hand of Luke, the apostle Luke. Accounting, Acts, what Shaul of Tarsus, the apostle Paul, was doing. Acts chapter 15, verse 19. Hmm. Well, we'll start at 15, 15, 15. And the words of the prophets agree with this, as it has been written, After this I shall return and rebuild the booth of David, the temple, which has fallen down, and I shall rebuild its ruins, and I shall set it up. This, by the way, is a quote from the prophet Amos. So that the remnant of mankind, hmm, remnant again, shall seek Yahuwah, even all the nations on whom my name has been called, says Yahuwah, who is doing all of this, who has made this known from old. Therefore I judge that we should not trouble those from among the nations who are turning to Elohim, but, the nations who are turning to Elohim, but, you don't have to be a full-blown Yehudi Jew, but, that we write to them to abstain from the defilements of idols. Oh, why is Yah smashing people in Jeremiah 41, I'm sorry, where were we? What we just read. Jeremiah 44, 45, 46. That you abstain from the defilement of idols and from whoring and from what is strangled and from blood. For from ancient generations, Moshe has in every city those proclaiming him being read in the congregations every Sabbath. Here's what you new Gentile believers in Messiah need to do. Don't trouble those from among the nations who are turning to Elohim. It doesn't say turning to Jesus. Because he, Messiah, is the intercessor in between us and Elohim. Yeshua elsewhere says, Why do you call me good? No one is good but Elohim. Uh, Luke 24 when the apostles, when Yeshua is cloaked and they don't know that it's him, are saying, and he was a prophet of Elohim. The, Yeshua always points back to the Father. So if you're a Gentile believer in Messiah, what's the goal here? Point back to the Father. What did the Father say? Therefore I judge that we should not trouble those from among the nations who are turning to Elohim, but that we write to them to abstain from the defilements of idols and from whoring, and from what is strangled, and from blood. That's all Torah, by the way. For from ancient generations, Moshe has in every city those proclaiming him, reading the Torah, being read in the congregations every Sabbath. So a new Gentile believer in Messiah should turn to Elohim, do these basic Torah foundation things, and then go hear what Moshe said on the Sabbath. Where does it say that? In the New Testament. From the mouth of Paul, as recorded by the Apostle Luke in Acts chapter 15, verses 15 through 19. Incredible. But you won't hear that preached on a Sunday morning. The point of all this, Jeremiah 44, 45, 46, is yet again an earmuffs, kids. If I could sum up Jeremiah in one sentence, it's this. The Father is not impressed with your bullshit. He's not impressed with my bullshit. Did you do what he told you to do?
That is a yes, no. It's as simple as that. If you didn't, you don't have a leg to stand on because he's a compassionate and loving father and he's told you over and over and over what to do and you chose to not do it. And if you did do it, if you were obedient, then you will be blessed. Amidst all of this chaos, amidst the destruction of the nations, amidst the falling away of some of your brethren, and amidst your own reproof and instruction, you will be blessed. That's the book of Jeremiah in a nutshell. And that's the tactical practical of Jeremiah 44, 45, 46. Bless y'all. Shalom.